reviews, and I will send you a copy for 40 bucks. Oh, and people are telling me, hey, you know that tape that is slow. The tape machine must have been slow on the... No. This is what happened. This does happen in real life, and I can't believe people are that stupid. But, you know, if you've never played live, you don't know these things. If you have an intro tape that's in tune with the first song you're going to play, <laughs> or whatever, like Diary of a Madman, it was it's tuned down a half step, and everything on Blizzard was standard tuning, or semitone, as they said over there. So... The show that I got, Ozzy could barely sing. You could hear it. He was horrible. So they tuned down another half step. So all the diary stuff is a whole step down, and all the Blizzard stuff is a half step down. And you can't hear it on the YouTube thing because I cut off the intro, but on my master of it, it, it starts. You know, the guy hits record and hits the intro and you can't hear the audience and then you start you start to hear them through the mics on the stage but you hear you think you're listening to the album because it starts you know diary of a madman but it's they you know it, it they used i think they were using a nagra quarter inch you know to do it. and you can adjust the speed easily so they just go down half step because that's why, because I'm like, okay, well, they probably just were tuning down, and you can hear, like, you know, Randy pick, like, a note to make sure he's in tune with the intro tape. Because he never did that, at, at, ever. But when they tune down, on several shows I've heard it, you can always hear him, like, make sure he's in tune with the intro, because the first sign was always over the mountain. So, there you go. So, anyways, that's how Sharon got control of the Aussie Empire and all the money. And that's how she that's how she grabbed it. Otherwise, it was actually Don Arden that footed the bill for the recording, the tours, the Blizzard tour, and the Diary tour. And he wanted to be paid back. And now he wasn't going to get anything. And she always said that he was suing her, or she was suing him for money, but he was suing her. But she had a ton of bills. He had a, a lot of debt, and she took that debt on when she stole the masters. He just said, you know what? <clears throat> Fine, it's yours, have it. And you get all the debt, too, and you get to pay it off. But she did, because, you know, no one knew those friggin' two albums were going to blow up and be as big as they were. So. There's your story. So Sharon stole the masters from this girl that worked for Jet Records and Don Arden. So the night before, she was supposed to fly to London and give them the masters for two, the first two albums and three live shows. Sharon showed up with cops and took them all, and that's how she gained control of the Ozzy Osbourne empire. There you go. There's your story for tonight. Isn't that like a Christmas tale? And there was a quiet mouse sitting over there in the corner eating a piece of cheese, whatever. You do know that it's all about him. Let's just say him. Yes, I am a Christian. You know, I, I've gotten over all that crazy stuff I did in my 20s when I, you know, was friends with Anton LaVey. So, and yeah, and I read, you know, stuff on Aleister Crowley, H.P. Lovecraft. And then the books that Alistair, or not Alistair, but Anton would give me. Because Anton, you, okay, I'm not telling you who Anton LaVey is. You look it up. He really liked my band Trick or Treat because every song was about Satan or hell. We wanted to go, like, you know, Venom and just, but the Hollywood way. So I was kind of, you know, we had makeup on. The first show was a little glammy, then a little more glammy than I wanted. In the second show, we were all, you know, death gray and, you know, trying to look like dead chicks. And then the singer, Mandy, he just had a G string and friggin' thigh high boots and just 
But he was great because he didn't sound like anybody else. And we were set. Because I forgot, I kept thinking, we were supposed to go on tour, so we were booked for six months after the first two shows, Trick or Treat, and we were supposed to go to Japan and open for Motorhead, because they just, the guy, uh, Motorhead's manager, it's escaping me now, he was at the third show we played, the one, the huge one, where we uh, played with uh, Michelangelo. And uh, he's like, those are the guys I'm going to take over to, with Motorhead to Japan. We were going to just open for him. And we were just trying to settle the contract with uh, Capital. They wanted us bad. So we went to Audible Sound. That was our rehearsal studio. And Motley Crue was in one room. Wasp was in the other room. And we're sitting in the middle room waiting for Mandy to show up because we got two reps from Capitol Records sitting waiting for us to play. We showcase for them. So we had a few friends there. We were all decked out. And Mandy just blew it. He never showed up. And the guys from Capitol are like, well, we're here. Run through the set. We'll make a recording because we had a set up to make a stereo, a nice stereo recording. And uh, that was it. And we gave it to them, and we're like, maybe we can just throw the vocals on later. And they're like, sure. You guys sound great. You look incredible. We want to sign you guys, but we, we need to get that singer. And, and we never could because he just vanished. Because over $5,000, someone gave him $5,000, and he quit. And we were getting ready to be signed to Capitol. And go on tour. Well, idiot, huh? And he never went on tour, ever. The tour that he uh, did with hello yes yeah oh, I'm waiting for them to get here but I, they're not here I'm going to call and see when they're going to come over they're supposed to be here at, no they're supposed to be here at 9 but they're not here I'm talking to Ben Brescia if you want to know okay, he's making a video didn't know I'd gone that long okay I'm going to wrap it up and then call them and see what they're doing. All right. Okay. Bye. So that was a long uh, story. I hope you guys liked it. It's a Christmas story for the night. I won't torture you with any more music unless you want me to. Do you want me to? I'll play a little bit of uh, Eternal Darkness for you. <laughs>
that's all the guitars going on in that song. You know what? Heart, 56 listens on one and about 50-something on the other. Because there's one with two songs and one with three, but the third one we're cutting out and redoing it because the guitar sounds wimpy. And the bass is it. The intonation's off. That's what it is. He thinks the guitars are out of tune. The guitars aren't out of tune. His bass is it and not intonated correctly. So when he hits the high E, it sounds bad. Yeah. 